Our final subject was Luke. He took a total time of 2 minutes and 56 seconds. The number of errors were zero and the number of external prompts needed was none. The software prompts need, were not needed either. Luke had an in-depth knowledge of the software and navigated the interface with ease. He required no external prompts nor did he require prompts from the software. He managed to remove the advertisement that had been irritating and distracting all three subjects. After the user trial, we recorded feedback from the users. Our first user, Jane, said the pop-up prompts were handy, but you were left in the dark without them. She said the browser was very easy to use, the sidebar was very confusing, and she wasn't sure of where the music went when it was taken off the CD. Connor, the second user, did not realize that it was simple as drag and drop to transfer music from the library to the iPod. He said the ad at the bottom was annoying and distracting and that the iTunes software was not as good as the media player software. He also said he would have been lost without the lad's help. Our third and final user was Luke. He said it was easy peasy as he was a frequent user of iTunes and had no problems. In order to assess the usability of iTunes, we decided to compare it to similar software available for the downloading of music from CD to digital format. The Windows Media Player software can be easily navigated along the top section of the interface. The user is given the option to navigate the library, rip music from a CD, burn music onto a CD or sync music with an MP3 player device similar to the iPod. These are sim simple options that would allow a novice user to easily work through the tasks set in this experiment. Sony Sonic Stage is again a similar media software, but is by far the most intuitive. On the top left of the screen, the user can set select between three areas of music storage, music drive, CD and device. The user would then select which area the music is to be transferred from, for example CD. The list of tracks would be displayed on the left side of the screen. The user would then choose which area they would like to transfer the music to. By selecting one of the options on the left hand side of the screen. For this task the user would have selected device, for example the iPod. In the center of the CD and device, there is a large icon record and an arrow pointing right. This clearly shows where the music is coming from and where it is going. The software gives you a simple three-step list to carry out the task. If given the trial again, the user would find that the Sony Sonic Stage software is easiest to follow, with simple move files from left to right set up.
From a graphic design standpoint, the iTunes software is quite stylish and well put together. The colors selected, fonts, gradients, etc. are all very appealing and easily comprehensible. From the user trials carried out, there were no real issues with the software's clarity or the ease in which the subject could read and understand the screen content. This clarity of text is a trademark of all Apple products and serves the purpose of the iTunes software very well. However, the problems associated with the software are numerous. These problems were encountered by the users throughout the trial, except in the case of Luke, the expert user. When answering the evaluation criteria questions outlined in the design of the experiment section, the problems regarding the software became very apparent. Will the users try to achieve the right effect? Firstly, the music must be stored on the software library, which is an integral step in the process, but as the task is to transfer music from CD to iPod, the user has no reason to think that this step is necessary. Will the user notice that the correct action is available? This is not always the case, as the correct action is only apparent when a pop-up prompt asking would you like to perform this action with a yes or no option appears. Without these prompts, new users will not be able to carry out relatively simple tasks such as the ones set out in this experiment. Will the user associate the correct action with the effect to be achieved? Most of the actions in this task require a drag and drop technique. With no specific instruction to use this technique and no other alternative technique to execute the action, it is difficult for the user to associate drag and drop with file transfer. If the correct action is performed, will the user see that progress is being made towards the solution of the task? The iTunes software very clearly shows when the correct action is taken. The feedback of a looping sync icon beside the de designated area and a file transfer window at the top of the interface lets the user know that a file is being transferred. These, however, can sometimes be displayed too briefly and then the user cannot see the files in their new location. In comparison to other media software, the iTunes software is lacking in many common usability features. These features are user prompts, obvious icons and commands, step-by-step -step progression and user instruction, mimicking reality, i.e. icons, progress, etc. In conclusion, the iTunes software is a comprehensive media software that has revolutionized the way we listen to music. As an interface, it introduces new thinking to the transfer of music files. However, aside from this, the software poses many difficulties for new users. The software incorporates many standard features, pull-down menus and search boxes, etc. But these standard computer software features are the only ones that a computer user recognizes. The other software features such as drag and drop, on-screen advertisements and lack of screen prompts are features that users are not used to with similar media software. For iTunes novices, many of the convenient features appear confusing with no explanation. The second major problem experienced with the software is the excess of action it requires to use it. The purpose of music is not organizing it, but enjoying it and probably enjoying it while doing something else. However, monitoring and changing music in iTunes often disrupts that primary task. Music is supposed to be a means of relaxation and enjoyment, however the iTunes software has turned this experience into a time-consuming and frustrating one. Overall, the software is difficult to learn, time-consuming to use, it only benefits experienced users, and changes the way we listen to music, but is this change for the better?